With that being said, we're going to be introducing a new segment to the show. It is called Combat Corner. And this week is going to be Rudy getting into all things UFC. I am a former boxer, so I'm going to be talking about things boxing. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, there's a fight coming on. I'm going to be talking about that next week. Not today. We're going to leave Combat Corner up to Rudy because I didn't, unfortunately, have the time to watch UFC 299. Uh, well, that, actually, that's coming up at UFC Fight Night Mexico, actually. And um, even though I've spent a lot of time working with the UFC and some of their fighters, we'll talk about that down the line. But, Rudy, give us some of your thoughts on the UFC before we wrap up this show with Combat Corner. Let's go, man. This is, this is you know, topics near and dear to my heart because I love MMA. I actually love boxing, too. And I, you saw that Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney face-off yesterday, I'm sure. Yeah, I've seen it. Because they were going, I mean... They get so close. I think these guys want to kiss each other. It's, it gets a little bit weird at a certain point. It's going to be a good but fight. It's going to be a fight. I can't wait for that. That fight, I would pay for that fight. That That's a fight I'd pay for. So we got a big one that's coming, that's coming up this week, um, next Saturday in Miami, which I will be at front and center because I cannot wait. I don't miss cards down here. UFC 299. You got Sugar Sean O'Malley and Cheeto Vera. Uh, O'Malley is the champion, and Cheeto Vera beat him the first time. O'Malley doesn't believe he lost because it was really to, to an injury. Um, but that's part of fighting. When you kick a, when you kick someone in the leg and they check your kick and your leg busts, yeah. Or if you turn your ankle, guess what? That's part of the fight game. Yeah, you know, that's a ama- it doesn't matter how you win or how you lose, but it, it matters just that you win. You know, that's gonna be a big fight. I mean, realistically, I'd be surprised if O'Malley lost this one. Um, because Vera really always looks for you know, tries to finish people with one shot power. He's not really, he's not active enough to me. Um, and I think O'Malley's confidence is probably through the roof after beating Aljamain Sterling. But this card is stacked. I mean, people that don't know, Dustin Poirier is fighting Benoit Saint Denis. Big fight between Michael Venom Page and Kevin Holland. Now, this fight has absolutely zero implications for shit, other than these two dudes are gonna fight. If you've seen Michael Venom Page when he was in um, Bellator. That dude's a striker. Kevin Holland is allergic to wrestling. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about these two dudes looking for a, 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 a single leg or, or looking to grapple, or looking to do jiu-jitsu. These dudes are going to throw and throw and throw. You don't have to worry about that being Kamzat, Kamzat Chemayev domination of Kevin Holland because he wants to wrestle fuck him. This is going to be a fight. I can't wait for this fight, actually. Gilbert Burns Durinho. He, he trains down here. He's fighting Jack Della M- M- Madalena. It's going to be a hell of a hell of a scrap. And Peter Yang is Song Yadong. I mean, that, that Yang Yadong. Like that, that's going to be a scrap, too. I mean, this card, a prelim fight is Curtis Blades against Jalton Jer- Almeida. Almeida could legitimately be the next title contender at heavyweight if he wins this fight. Overall, this card is sick. If you don't, if you like MMA, if you're an MMA guy, you need to be at this card because Dana White learned a decade plus ago when he brought some dog shit down here and no one went. He treated Miami like we were fucking Austin, Texas or Columbus, Ohio, where there's not fuck all to do. You want to bring in that UFC card down here? You need to bring us an event. And they're, they figured that shit out. Last year, when they brought us Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira, unbelievable card, was packed to the gills. Masvidal fought Burns in that fight. No, yeah, Burns. He fought Burns in that fight. Um, was it Burns or was, it wasn't? No, it was Colby. Was after that. He fought Burns. I mean, you you got a hell of. I mean, he they've learned. You bring us events. This is Super Bowl City. Should be All Star Game City. MMA, you bringing us cards. Now, UFC Fight Night Mexico last weekend, bro, <laughs> the main event of uh, Brandon Moreno and Brandon Royval, the winner is probably going to get a title shot, and Royval picked up the upset in a, in a, I believe it was a split, split decision, where Moreno won his card 49-46. Don't you love those, Donald? A 49-46 one way and then 48-47 the other way for two cards. 
Those are crazy to me. It's like, what was what was this one guy? What were these two guys watching that the other guy wasn't seeing? That's crazy. Because I thought Moreno won the fight. I thought he controlled the first two rounds. I thought he dominated round five. And yet he loses. The, and, and none of the cards matched, which made it crazy. The 48-47s did not match at all. They were all over the board. You know, so when you see stuff like that happen, it's disappointing because I was expecting to see Moreno fight um, Alexander Pantoja for a, th- was a fourth time. I think he's lost three times to him already and, um, from the ultimate fighter, and then he lost another fight to him. But Roy Val just got the shit kicked out of him by Alexander Pantoja. So do I really want to see Alexander Pantoja fight Roy Val again? No, I like, I, like, I like Moreno. Moreno's a fun guy. He reminds me of McLovin from uh, Superbad. You know, now he's all tatted up. He used to look like a 12-year-old. Now he looks like he's been through some wars and shit like that. But um, that card was pretty damn freaking good. It, it was exciting to watch. You know, you go, you go to these other countries where, they're, you know, where you have Mexican fighters, for example, or when you go to Brazil and there's Brazilian fighters. Like, that shit, the excitement, the energy from those buildings. The, the co-main event between Yair Rodriguez and Brian Ortega, bro, that was a five-round fight. Yair Rodriguez comes out after Brian or- Brian Ortega in the intro jumps in the air and comes down and rolls his ankle. And you're sitting here like, did he just fucking blow his ankle out <laughs> before the fight starts? And there was an interview after. He's like, I can't believe this is happening. I mean, And he was in pain. He hurt his ankle. Yair Rodriguez put him on his ass in the first round. He was beating the shit out of Ortega, whooping him, dominating him. And then Ortega kind of, you know, regained his composure. He survived. And um, second round, takes him down. He's in full mount for literally the entire round, just pounding on his ass. And uh, third round, right back to the same. I mean, Ortega, you know, as you know, Donald's a freaking jujitsu genius, you know, and he... I mean, he does things so quickly that other guys in Brazilian jiu-jitsu just cannot do. And he get he takes him down. He manages to pull his, like, it wasn't even his back. It was like the side. He got him in, a, I don't even know what kind of choke you call it, because I'd never seen it before in an actual MMA fight, where he got him in this funky-ass sideways choke, choked him out, won the fight. And you know what? He's probably up next to fight... Uh, Ilya Taporia, if uh, Brian, if uh, Alexander Volkanovsky doesn't look for a rematch, so yeah, I mean, big MMA fan here. I love boxing too, but make sure you get to UFC 299 because you, if you're in Miami and you're not at UFC 299, you're missing you're missing fireworks. That's all awesome, I got, guys. You heard it here from Rudy first with our first ever combat corner. We look forward to doing Combat Corner at a future combat event one day. So shout out to all my old friends at UFC. Send over the credentials. Um, all of my guys at Matchroom Boxing, send over the credentials. PBC Boxing, send over the credentials. Unfortunately, Paramount has shut down Showtime Sports, who was actually located in Coral Gables, by the way. And that sucks because they brought us some of the biggest fights from the last 25 years. And there's no more Showtime Sports. Which oh. just- Showtime box. By the way, I didn't mention the Bellator PFL super fight bullshit because that was an absolute fucking debacle. It was trash. It was trash. Bellator won every single fight, and yet they're the ones that got bought by PFL, yeah. except for the heavyweight fight, which is Ryan Bader, who's 400 years old. He's 40, and he's 6'2, and the guy that whooped, beat him was 6'8, 260, yeah. and he's at the end of his tooth. Like, that was embarrassing. Yeah, that that was, was just straight up trash. There was no, no reason to bring that up. 